Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well and having a fantastic week. Today I'm joined by David from Wargaming Parrot. Hello. And we are going to be doing a Konya cage setup. Now if you haven't seen David's video already, head over there before this video to find out all about the cage that we have, our first impressions, pros and cons, all that kind of stuff. And you can find out about how we built it, what the process was like, how difficult or easy it was and what we just generally thought about it. And just like with David's video, we are very grateful to be working with Northern Parrots for this video. They've supplied us with some amazing toys and perches to kit out Olive's new cage with, which we're going to talk you through. Um, but I suppose we'll get into, first of all, some tips on to how to acclimatise your bird to a brand new cage. It's going to be a really scary experience, can't it? Definitely. You definitely want to get them um, used to the cage before. Just as I said in my video, we got this cage built in advance and we had it in the room so all the birds could get used to it. So it's not too scary and it's just not that big a shock to their system. We've even had Olive in a little bit interacting around it. All the birds have interacted on top, they all love it. And yeah, it's just a good, good first step. <laughs> So our first tip for getting a bird used to a new cage is when you put them into the new cage, make sure you do it in the morning. That gives your bird the entire day to get used to its new surroundings and it's not so scary when they go to bed and there's different shadows and different things that they may not have explored yet. So that's really, really important to make sure they have as much of a day as possible to get used to their new environment. Our next tip would be to lay out a cage in a similar pattern to their old one. So when you have the new cage, it might be tempting to just Kit it out completely fresh and just put everything in completely different places, which would be very unfamiliar to the bird. It'd be a bit confusing and scary. So if you can replicate a similar layout, it makes them more comfortable and they're a bit more familiar with where things are and it may be a little bit stressful for them. And our final main tip is not to completely put loads of fresh stuff in the cage that your bird has never seen before. Now, as I said, we've been very kindly gifted lots of lovely goodies for Olive. However, we are going to use some of the components from her old cage in the new one, just so she has some familiarity and not everything is completely different. Because obviously the cage is totally different. And then if everything inside is really different, it's going to be quite scary too. And also another point which I think is worth mentioning is um, make going in the cage a really positive experience and loads of treats. So Olive, what does she like? Uh, nice? She loves her hemp seed, she loves yeah. her fruits. <laughs> just something else occurred to me just now as well, is if you you can purchase similar toys, because we've obviously picked similar toys to what Olive already has, what she liked, that can also be helpful. You can just, don't go sort of too crazy on um, outlandish toys, go for similar things they already have. And they can be different shapes and stuff, but they'll still be relatively familiar to them. Mm -hmm. If you've been watching either of our channels for any amount of time, you'll know that we talk about Norman Parrots a lot, mm. and that is because we genuinely love them as a company. We think they are amazing, incredible customer service. Um, very good variety, lots of products. We like that because we want to be able to pick from the widest variety of things possible, so our birds have lots of different things to try out. Mm -hmm. They also have a really cool Facebook group called Purely Parrots, which I'm a moderator of, so if you have Facebook, come and join us. There's lots of fun and games on there and exclusive offers. But we just think they're awesome, and we are so privileged and thankful to them for sending us these lovely, lovely goodies and we think that Olive is going to love them. However, I will point out that with all of the toys and things that we have for our birds, we always rotate them. So it's not just Olive being spoiled today, all the birds are going to have lots of fun with these toys. So we are going to show you what we have brand new for Olive and the other birds. And if you would like to check out anything we mentioned in this video, Olive actually has her own landing page on Northern Parrots, which I'm going to link down below and you can see all of the different things that we have um, on, in this video. The first toy I want to show you is this lovely natural bird kebab. We absolutely love these bird kebabs, um, all of the birds love them. This is one of the reasons we picked this for this cage because, as I mentioned before, it's familiar but it's a little bit different because it's a bit bigger. So these are great for all small birds, even medium to large because they're so easily chewable and I was constantly chewing at them, we have to constantly replace them, so we thought it was an obvious choice for Olive's cage. And then I have got uh, what's called a party preener, which looks like a bundle of fun. It's basically a kind of wicker ball with loads of crinkle paper and Olive loves crinkle paper. We actually have a foraging pouch that's full of crinkle paper, which we're going to put in um, the new cage. It's really familiar and she loves it. And again, it's something from Northern Parrots as well. But we've gone for this one and she just loves pulling it all out and making a great big mess. Uh, but it's really great fun. And I think a lot of birds would really enjoy this kind of toy. It's really great for kind of preening behavior and foraging too. And once your bird has actually pulled out all of this, there is that lovely wicker ball inside which you could repurpose as a foraging toy. And also, as I mentioned, the preening behaviour. This is more of a like a natural and safe preening behaviour with this paper rather than something like cotton rope or synthetic rope, which some um, places will encourage for preening. We prefer things like this with the crinkle paper, which encourages natural preening behaviour, which is safe. 
So next thing we've got is this corner perch, which is a Fun Max um, bird toy Zoomax product, basically. I quite like Zoomax because they do one of my favorite products, which is a teach box, which is what started most of our birds' behaviors. But what I like about this is you can just shove it in the corner of the cage and it provides a lovely shelf which could be used for foraging, could be used for feeding. They could even just sit in it and preen. I just think it adds a little bit of extra, I don't know, utility and dynamism. Is that even a word? <laughs> Another dynamic to the cage they can enjoy. The other small fringe benefit of having this is it's uh, a different sort of like surface for them to exercise their feet. So they're not always running on perches. They'll move along this as well, which gives their feet something else to move along. And the next one, which I'm really excited to see how our birds respond to once you train them how to do it, is this amazing foraging wheel. So as you guys probably know if you've watched our videos, we don't normally put kind of plastic things in our birds' cages. However, we do have the exception with foraging toys. I think I first saw this in a Mikey the McCall video, um, but I just think it's a really cool um, novel way of introducing foraging to your bird. So they can kind of see the treats because it's clear acrylic and then they have to turn it round and try and manipulate the treats to come out and you can make it really hard as well if your bird is a pro with foraging you can actually stuff it with paper or things like that and they have to pull out the paper before they can even get the treats so i'm really really excited to see how our birds get on this is something we've actually had before but not in these colors it's called a party preener but party preener perch and we like this because it's again it's something good for their feet it's a bit different it also encourages chewing and foraging you could stuff some treats in between these and yeah there's just something interesting they can sit on um we were considering putting one of these outside the cage but we thought we'd try it inside the cage first and yeah it attaches to this lovely wooden block which again it's good for feet it's different textures i don't expect them to chew it although if you had a larger parrot they might enjoy that but it just provides a sort of different activity for her to indulge in we've also got this um jw clean cup um, this could be a really fun kind of foraging bowl. Um, we normally use stainless steel bowls for our food and water just because they're a bit easy to clean. But I think this could be really fun to kind of stuff with some crinkle paper again or just some substrate or something and hide treats in there or have like toy parts that uh, Olive can play, like foot toys, that kind of thing. So I think that could be a really fun component. So almost like think outside the bowl. A bowl doesn't just have to be for like food and water. You could actually make it into a foraging activity. So here we have quite a large toy. It's called a crunch and munch and we picked this basically because we have something similar but not in this kind of sizing where you've got these lovely woven balls you have this preening material which is made out of natural paper and you have these sort of like like wicker almost wicker almost <laughs> yeah i never know what to describe them as you do have some hardwood in here as well but i don't really expect anyone to chew it but again they can climb on it and um chew on it chew on the wicker so to speak it might be palm leaf actually i'm not quite sure but um i think the boys have chewed like these slats before so yeah. they may have a go at it but especially yeah. with olive of her beak you know she <laughs> might um, be able to get through it but we thought this was an interesting toy and a good addition to the cage next up we have our favorite sanding perches there are lots that we kind of don't recommend because they're not so great on birds feet but i think this one is awesome this is actually made with crushed up seashells and it's all sustainable as well which is obviously really important but um your birds are going to be filing down their nails on this they can rub their beaks on it to help keep them nice and trim but it's also um something that they can actually pick off they can pick off the seashells it's perfectly safe for them to do so and uh, all of our birds have these in their cages at the moment but Obviously we'll want to get her a nice fresh one, uh, so she's all set up in her new cage. So our next toy is a Zoomax foraging fun box. Uh, this sort of thing is quite popular with the Conyers. The boys don't really like it as much, but the Conyers do love them. You've got lovely crinkle paper inside they can pull out, you can put treats inside it. You have this um, uh, rope material, woven rope, a paper rope basically, which they can chew on. They all love chewing that. These little stars they can move around and generally just have a bit of fun with. And if they pull out all of the insides as well, you can restuff it, which I think is, is really fun to kind of repurpose. Well, no, with Olive, she'll probably chew through the cotton. Maybe, so we'll have much to wait and see. We'll keep you updated. <laughs> and then I have this, which is a Busy Birdie Play Perch. So we picked this because we thought it was something a little bit different and something I probably wouldn't normally go for. So we're trying different things. And what I like about it is kind of like um, a busy map almost. So we can't really get seagrass mats over here in the UK, which is a real shame. Um, but you can get something like this. It's got this kind of palm leaf woven material again. You've got like rattan balls, um, palm leaf stars, you've got finger traps, which is an all-time favourite for our birds. Oh, yes. 
Um, it has got some plastic beads on, which I think I'll probably take off just to be on the safe side. But this is really fun as well because it actually comes with a perch which you can shove through. So your bird can actually sit on here and then play with all this. And of course, if they destroy all of this, you can actually repurpose it and add your own bits and pieces. So I think this is going to be really interesting. I don't know if she's going to be scared of it, so we'll see um, how she reacts to all of these different things. But this is really novel and um, yeah, I'm excited to give it a go. So we have a kebab parrot treat holder. It's like a mini kebab thing, which we thought would be very cool to add to Olive's cage because she loves her fruits. She loves chewing, especially peppers, so we can put like, big chunks of pepper on there mm -hmm. to provide another sort of um, bit of enrichment activity for her and, and indeed the other um, birds because we can just move it around. And it's just some, something very simple, very easy, just to add a bit of extra excitement to your parrot's cage. The other sort of fringe benefit of this it is um, they're very good for encouraging some fussy birds to try vegetables because it's like a foraging toy almost. You put the vegetables on, they might have a nibble, they might have a chew. Olive's bobbing, she's obviously in agreement with me on this point. And um, yeah, so it's one of those great introductions to vegetables, just like herbs, which I always go on about. Sophie makes a joke about me talking about, talk about herbs. But yeah, this sort of thing, herbs, you sorted. And the final brand new toy is this awesome jellyfish natural toy. So it's got a coconut shell at the top and then it's got these kind of palm leaf um, jellyfish legs. Tentacles. Like, tentacles um, at the base. And again, this is just something a bit different. It's fun, it's shreddable, it moves around, which is obviously very um, interesting for birds. So we're going to see what she thinks about this. Again, we'd like to say a massive thank you to Northern Parrots for supplying these goodies for the birds. We're very, very grateful. And we're going to start setting up the cage, which is very exciting. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention these quick link clips. We do use these with our birds. We know that they don't chew them, they don't unfurl them. Some birds will, so you need to make sure you're checking these every day, seeing how your bird interacts with them. If they're quite interested in them, it's worth not using them and using something like paper string instead, just because they can get caught sometimes. However, we know, because we spend pretty much all day with our birds, literally right in front of them, that they don't interact with the clips at all, so we are going to use them. But as I said, if you're ever unsure, use something like paper string to attach your toys to the cage. So here's the cage, all bare and ready to be filled with toys and goodies. So in three, two, one, and there we have it. So we've got the cage all set up now. We've got all different components. So we're just going to talk you through all the different bits that we've put in, why we've put them there, and um, then we'll see how she gets on. And we've got the play top, which we've had a, we filled with a substrate base, so they can have it as a foraging activity. We put the kebab up here as well, so she has a nice, fun, chewable toy up there, and all the birds can enjoy. You've obviously got the bowls, which we're going to fill with food and water, and it just makes it a nice, interesting area to play on. Then, as we go into the cage, at the very top, we've got a couple of options for sleeping, and we've also just popped in her toy on the perch that I reckon she's going to sleep in, which is this one. Um, she normally likes to cuddle up to that toy, so we've put that in there for a bit of familiarity. And we've also put the party preena toy next to it because she had something similar in her old cage, so hopefully that'll be quite familiar as a similar setup. So next to her sleeping perch, we have the party preena perch because again, it's something she can step onto and have a bit of fun chewing. And then if you go around, we set up a little sort of foraging area. We have that large, lovely sort of um, wall toy there, a perch next to it she can play with. And then if you just pan down, we've got the foraging wheel, which we haven't filled yet, and the shelf, which we'll put some um, sort of like those snacks in there just to make it more fun for her. Then we've got the jellyfish toy. And again, we've got some of her perches from her old cages, so they're quite familiar. We've got a calcium perch. At the back there, we've got one of the bowls that came with the cage, and we're going to use that as a foraging bowl. We've got the crunch and munch toy there. Then if we pan front, we've got the dowel perch still in there. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a custom made perch just to go along, which is um, going to be more comfortable for her feet. But one dowel perch is absolutely fine to have in the cage. It's not going to be harmful for her. We've got her uh, stainless steel bowls for her food and water. Um, I do need to go and get her water one, um, but the holder is just there so she can eat at the front. As I said, we are keeping these in here for the moment. They have got these lovely food dishes here, but she normally eats at the front. So we wanted to keep that really familiar for her for the time being. And then we can always try her on the other bits and pieces at another point. Down at the bottom here, we've added another toy that she's familiar with. It's a chewing and sort of like um, preening toy that she loved, all natural. And we put that back in because we know she's going to want to play with it. 
that's actually called a vine star. It's available from Northern Parrots. <laughs> uh, then we've got the um, clean cup thing. See if you would like to forage in that from the floor. We've got the Zoomax toy at the back. And then we've got the Easy Chick bedding as well. So this is how we've set it up. We don't know how she's going to react just yet. We're going to see in a second. But of course, if we find that some things are getting pooped on a lot or she doesn't like certain things, we can always change this around. But that's the beauty of uh, setting up a cage because you can always change it around to meet your bird's needs. And the other cool thing we did as well, which we mentioned in David's video, is we have used the grate, which we don't use, because of course we use substrate. We've just cable tied it to the frame at the bottom, and then we've got a lovely storage area that I can <laughs> fill with even more toys, because I definitely don't have a parrot toy problem. Um, but this is the setup, we're really happy with it, and now we're gonna see what Olive thinks of it. Again, a massive thank you to the Northern Parrots for all of the goodies for our birds. We are very, very grateful and thankful. Make sure you head down to the description because Olive has her own little shop area on Northern Parrots and you can check out all of the goodies that she's been given. She's checking out the play top at the moment, being very, very brave. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Take care and see you later.